hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel chemistry basics if you haven't subscribed this channel first subscribe the channel and then press the bell icon button so you'll get the notification of my next video okay so let's start the today's topic the woodward pfizer rule so woodward pfizer rule is applicable for the calculation of lambda max of conjugated systems or conjugated compounds just like a dienes or enone systems before going to study this rule few words about the woodward so woodward was a renowned and a very good looking scientist at that time he was a professor in harvard university and he got the nobel prize in 1965 for organic synthesis of complex natural products so in his life He has completed near about 200 research papers. Out of that, nearly 85 are the full published research paper. So Woodward and Pfizer, both fellows, are working on the calculation of the lambda max values of conjugated systems like diene and enone systems, and that's why the name is given Woodward-Pfizer rule. So today we are going to see the calculation of lambda max for only diene system. in on system we'll see later on okay so let's start the diene system so we have a one diene here so see that's a carbon carbon double bonds which are conjugated and as two double bonds are there so that's why the name is diene so this is the diene system now this diene system is divided into two parts so basic diene part and addendum part so what is the basic diene part so this this part is the basic diene part which do not counts this substituents so this is the basic diene part which is acts as a chromophore and the other part that r groups that substituent parts that comes in the addendum part so that particular addendum part we have to add in a basic diene part during the calculations okay so now let's see what's the rule there so rule consists of the five points so let's see one by one so first point basic lambda max value for an unsubstituted acyclic heteroannular diene is 215 or 214 nanometer most of the books are considering the 214 nanometer there so what is the heteroannular diene so that we'll see afterwards we are going to take the examples of that so it will be a more clear to you what is mean by the heteroannular diene okay now second point is homo annular double bond so in addition to this if homo annular double bond is there so you have to add 39 nanometer in basic lambda max if you have a extended conjugation or extra double bond in conjugation so then each carbon carbon double bond we have to add a 30 nanometer in basic lambda max value then fourth point is the hexocyclic double bond so when hexocyclic double bond is present so you have to add a 5 nanometer value if one double bond is hexocyclic to two rings so if a one double bond is there and it is joined to two rings so then you have to add the 10 nanometers in the basic lambda max value now let's see the fifth point is the substituent so this is the very important thing substituents because most of the uh, mistakes are takes place in this part so substituents when you have a hydrogen or acetate part so then you have to add the zero nanometer so when you have a substituent a alkyl group or halogens like cl br or a ring residue ring residue means a ring part so when you then you have to add the 5 nanometer to the basic lambda max if substituent is hydroxyl or or that's alkoxy group so you have to add the 6 nanometer in basic lambda max value if you have a sr group or nr2 groups so you have to add 30 and 60 nanometer respectively in a basic lambda max value so you have to just follow these five points so let's see some basic terms used in this rule that's the homo annular or hetero annular diene so suppose i have drawn here some dienes so let's see in first structure c 
see two double bonds that are conjugated and are present in one and the same ring so therefore it is called as a homo annular dime so as it is present in the one and the same ring double bond both double bonds should be present in the same ring then it is called as a homo annular dime so if you are taking the second structure so two double bonds that are definitely conjugated but the two double bonds are present in the different ring ring a and ring b so therefore this particular system or this diene is known as a heteroannular diene so hetero means a different so double bonds should be present in a different rings homo in same double bond should be present in the same ring one more diene i have drawn here it's a very simple diene so it's a just conjugated so it is a acyclic unsubstituted diene is there okay so this is about the some examples of the diene so all of you are getting clear about homo annular and heteroannular diene so homo means same ring or the double bonds present in the same ring hetero means double bond should be present in the different ring okay now let's go for the next point extended double bond or extra double bond in conjugation means what so suppose we have this particular diene here okay or this particular compound so this part is considered as a basic diene part now if you see here one more double bond is there and it is in conjugation with this diene part so that's why i can say a one double bond is present in conjugation with the basic diene and that's why at that time i have to add a 30 nanometer value extra to the basic lambda max value that is a 214 okay now in this system this is the diene part and this double bond is in conjugation with this diene part so therefore one double bond or one extra double bond is present in conjugation okay now if you see this particular structure so here also two double bonds that's the diene part if you see this diene part is the homo annular because both the double bonds are present in the same ring and one double bond is extra in conjugation if you see this particular diene so where these two double bonds are in conjugation but that third double bond is not in conjugation with this because it is separated by the two single bonds so at that time there is no addition of 30 nanometer takes place because it is not in conjugation okay now let's go for the exocyclic double bond what is mean by exocyclic double bond so exocyclic exo means from outside of the cycle so double bond should be attached to the cyclic system from outside so this double bond is attached to the cyclic system from outside so this is the exocyclic double bond so if you see here this a ring and this b ring so if you considering this a ring so this double bond is attaching from exo to a ring and if you consider the ring b so this double bond is attached to ring b from exo side so therefore this particular compound contains the two exocyclic double bonds two exocyclic double bonds okay now if you see this particular compound so here this a ring and this b ring so a and b ring having a common double bond so one double bond is exo to two rings at that time we have to add 10 nanometer extra to basic lambda max value so this is about the exocyclic double bond i think all of you are getting the basic terms that is discussed in this woodward pfizer rule now let's take some examples so as to we can calculate the lambda max value for different compounds let's calculate the lambda max for this compound so all of you remember this rule so first point is basic lambda max or unsubstituted acyclic heteroannular diene so it is about 214 nanometer second point whether it is a homo annular or not now this compound do not have the ring so there is no any homo annular system then third point is there so that will be whether 
extra double bond in conjugation is present or not so no extra double bond is present here so don't bother about that then we'll go for the fourth point so fourth point is the exocyclic double bond so this system is acyclic so no exocyclic double bond present in this now we'll go for the substituents so this is the diene part so this is the basic diene part that we have seen and now we have to calculate the substituents so here we have the two alkyl substituents so when you have a two alkyl substituents then you have to add 5 nanometer each so two alkyl substituents therefore 2 into 5 nanometer so that is equal to 10 nanometer so what you are getting the total here 224 nanometer so this is the lambda max value for this compound so in this way you can easily calculate the lambda max value for the any compound now let's take the second example and we have to calculate the lambda max for this so if you carefully see this becomes a dying part of the system so basic lambda max for unsubstituted or cyclic heteroannular system so that will be the 214 nanometer so that will be our first point now second point we have to just see whether it is a home handler or not so if you see here these two double bonds are present in one and the same ring and therefore it is a homo annular double bond so one homo annular double bond is present and therefore we have to add 39 nanometer to basic lambda max okay now let's go for the third point whether extra double bond in conjugation is present or not no there is no any extra double bond present then we'll go for the fourth point exocyclic double bond cycle is present there but from outside there is no any double bond so no exocyclic double bond now fifth point so fifth point so we have to just find out the substituents so we have to travel from this carbon to this carbon so if i am here so i can see this is the substituent now here also one substituent so this is also a substituent and this is also a substituent so we have to count now the substituent so this particular diene part has one two three four four substituent there are four alkyl substituents so we can write here four alkyl substituents present therefore four into five nanometer that is equal to 20 nanometer we have to add so let's do the addition of this so 9 4 13 so we'll have a one so 3 plus 3 6 plus 7 and 2 so we have a 273 nanometer value for this particular system now let's see the third example so this is the compound so we have to find out the dyne part first so suppose this will be a dyne part and this bond becomes a extra double bond in conjugation so let's find out the basic lambda max first so basic lambda max is always 214 nanometer then we have to find out whether it is a homo annular or not so it is a cyclic system but no homo annular system therefore no addition of 39 nanometer now extra double bond in conjugation yes one double bond is in extra and conjugation so we can write that one double bond extra in conjugation in conjugation so therefore how much nanometer we can add so it's a 30 nanometer then we have to see whether it is a exocyclic double bond present or not so yes if you see this will be the a ring and this will be the b ring so two rings have a common double bond so it is exo to a as well as b and therefore we have to write the or we have to add the extra 10 nanometers so one double bond exo to two rings therefore we have to add 10 nanometers now we'll go for the substituents so we have to travel from this point to this point 
because this whole part is in conjugation so whatever substituents present on this whole conjugated part all substituents we have to calculate so this is the first substituent now here if you are coming so it will be the second substituent then this becomes a third and now this becomes a fourth substituent so four substituents are present so substituents that four alkyl groups so that's why we can write 4 into 5 nanometer so that is equal to 20 nanometer okay 20 nanometer so what will be the total so if you are getting the total it's near about 4 so 3 4 5 6 7 so 274 nanometer so in this way you can easily calculate the lambda max value for any compound okay now one example for homework calculate the lambda max value for the beta carotene and how much it is just comment me in the comment section so thank you very much please subscribe my channel thank you best of luck